Hi guys, Mr. Of Waffles here. When Alpha Omega was being teased and in the build up to its release, Craig Houston mentioned that way back in the day, somebody asked him about Marlton being in the Nuketown bunker and was sort of suggesting that the community wanted more answers about what was going on there. It turns out that that person asking those questions was me. It may come as no surprise to many of you, but I remember sitting down with Craig at I think the Black Ops 3 launch event back in 2015, before the game had come out or anything, and I was there saying, hey Craig, nice to meet you for the first time. Could I just pick your brains for a second about these weird random bits of old zombies storyline info? And I basically said one of the things that I'd love to learn more about at some point in the future would be Malton and his experience in the bunker. And now we actually have a full Easter egg dedicated to just that. It's quite similar to how in Classified you can knock on the door and basically have a little bit of back and forth with that one sort of Samantha Nova Crawler's Easter egg. Except in this one, it's Malton, obviously, and Malton is talking about why he's in the bunker and generally what he knows about the Broken Arrow facility that he's actually ended up at. It's so cool that this is here, and I wouldn't be surprised if this ties in with other things in the map that are yet to be found. So keep an eye out for more videos like this from me in the future. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to play all of his quotes in two parts. The first part is going to be basically the generic lines that he says that aren't necessarily that kind of crazy. It's just him saying silly stuff in the way that the Black Ops 2 characters always did. And then in the second half, we'll get into some really juicy story stuff that I'll talk about a little bit, give you my thoughts on, and generally try and explain in the context of the rest of the story and what we're seeing in the map itself. So I'll roll those first half of quotes now. I regret to inform you that this broom closet is already at maximum capacity. One. Oh, no. I know what a human door knock sounds like, and you, sir, are not of the human door knocking variety. Why did I come to this place? Why did I give in to such foolish curiosity? If you wish to continue being a nuisance, you will inevitably force me to take drastic measures. I might even stop responding, and I know that would hurt your feelings. Beware, stranger. I have fashioned this mop into a sharp, pointy, spear-shaped weapon, and the bucket into an impenetrable helmet. I am no carnivorous beast's meat snack. Well, technically, I must acknowledge I am made of meat, but not of the snacking variety. If anyone is going to be eating me, it will be me. <sighs> I just hope it doesn't come to that. Sorry, but if I open this door, I risk ingesting air particles exhaled by the undead. I cannot risk inhaling their foul, contaminated breath. I believe we are experiencing some sort of interdimensional subatomic shift. That or something is seriously wrong with my lower digestive tract. What do you hope to accomplish with your continuous thunderous banging? Do you wish to alert everyone to our position? Okay, now that we've got the first block out of the way, we'll jump into the really story-dense quotes. This is where it gets really interesting, guys, and I'll interject as we go through to basically explain what's happening here. My reason for being here should come as no surprise. The ADAM initiative, Project Toy Soldier. I am aware of the advanced robotics program happening at this facility. I had to come see for myself if the rumors were true. This is a secret the government shall not keep from us. I don't care if it's been 60 years. So Project Toy Soldier, that's something that we haven't heard about before, but it's referenced elsewhere in the map. For example, you need the Project Toy Soldier codes to talk to Rushmore and actually get yourself the Raygun Mark II frames. It's cool that the angle they seem to be going for here is that Malton basically is a conspiracy theorist kind of nut job, almost in the same way that Stulinger is, except that Malton is more angled towards the kind of Bob Lazar sort of claiming that there's alien activity going on at Area 51 because he worked there and things like that and it all being a little bit mysterious. It's more that than the aliens did surgery on me in my sleep kind of thing. 
Still, it's a conspiracy theory, crazy, kooky idea all the same, and the last point he makes is that he doesn't care if it's been 60 years. The cool thing is that this actually basically ties in with another radio on the map that says that Samantha, I think it's Yuri saying this, is going to imminently be attacking, and they ask where she's going to attack, and Sam says she's attacking the people that are trying to resist against her, and one of those places is going to be this Broken Arrow facility, Camp Edward, and the time frame for it is not just just yet in the radio it's 50 60 years from now and then in this radio with Malton we're hearing that it's been 60 years so we're getting that jump forward in time which is so cool to see that means that we are at risk Sam poses an imminent threat to us even though in the other radio it sounded like she wouldn't be attacking for a long time so it's cool it's a cool little link there I'll jump into the next radio now oh you mean to say you're not familiar with the ADAM initiative the home service robot meant to cater to its owner's every need. It was supposed to revolutionize the world, except there was a problem. According to various internet forums I subscribed to, the robots began experiencing emotions. This became exponentially more problematic when Project Toy Soldier was started. They turned their robots into killer soldiers, but the robots did not wish to die. That was only the start of where it all went wrong. The home service robot, something that, again, we haven't really heard that much about in zombies, but you can kind of imagine might have always been there and always been lurking because of Ted's existence in transit. He's someone or something, depending on how you look at it, that has always had a lot of mystique around him and has fascinated a lot of the community, obviously. And it's really cool now that we are actually getting basically Ted's backstory and Ted's origins, but almost through the lens of this Project Adam initiative and the home service robots and things like that. It's not necessarily directly Ted himself, but it's giving us an idea of the experimentation being done into AI and that sort of stuff that Broken Arrow would be meddling with. The problem though for Broken Arrow is that things straight into basically the territory that we saw in the Black Ops 3 campaign. Do you remember they always told us that the Black Ops campaigns were meant to be a kind of trilogy in that first of all it was man against man, then it was man against machine in like 2025 in Black Ops 2, and then Black Ops 3 was machine against man or even machine corrupts man and that's why we got that really weird AI infused story about this AI consciousness becoming sentient and turning on people and it was really a trip. They're going in a similar similar direction here and saying that the robots didn't want to die and as you'll hear in the next radio they start to develop empathy and all sorts of other interesting emotions that are going to really make all these experiments that they're doing with the robots very problematic. There are two theories over why the project was abandoned. Theory number one, the facility's computer system went haywire and took control of the ADAMs. Makes sense but there's little evidence to support it. Theory number two, an incident occurred that led to the creation of an artificial entity. This entity took control of the facility, turning the ADAMs against the facility's occupants. I don't think I buy theory number two. I've read my science fiction, and an AI gone rogue seems much more plausible. Regardless, after the facility was shut down, the robotics programs were discontinued. This is the radio where they mention that an incident occurs, maybe, it's just a theory of course, a game theory, but they mention the idea that maybe an entity was created, an artificial entity that took control of the entire facility and turned the Adams against the facility's occupants. It's right in line with that Black Ops 3 kind of style of storytelling, as I said. And that entity, as far as we can tell from other radios and things on the map, is the Avogadro, or at least most likely the Avogadro, because remember, the Avogadro was created by Broken Arrow. It would make sense as well that this electrical kind of entity that we never really knew that much about would be the one that would turn the machines against their captors. And Malton goes on in the next radio to say, there has to be something going on here with the robots because the facility is still running. It's still here 60 years later. I maintain what I've always said. The robots at this facility are still alive. How else do you explain this place? We're in the middle of the desert. Yet this facility still has power. The grass is green and the buildings are well maintained. Who do you think is taking care of this place? There hasn't been a human here in decades. Those robots, the ones that stand so perfectly still, they're the caretakers. And now I fear we've angered them. 
They're the caretakers, he says. And now I fear we've angered them. Now, this ties in with another Easter egg on the map where you can shoot the heads off a lot of the robot mannequins. And if you shoot enough of the heads, you basically trigger a weird kind of attack kind of sequence where mannequins will attack you. And if you get through it, you get yourself a free perk. So Malton is right. The robots that have seemingly been caretaking this facility a little bit have sort of turned against you now. And there is a reward for taking them down, but it makes you think when you realize that these robots have emotions and they don't want to die despite the fact that they're just machines there's other stuff on the map too that says that this isn't just an undead problem as has happened in plenty of other facilities and things over the years it's worse because this isn't just a human being reanimated but it's something that could be more than a human because it's this robot ai sentient life force thing that has potentially got an entire army at its disposal now and that's exactly what Malton's talking about here saying I fear we've angered them and I mean it's a recipe for disaster so that is the Malton easter egg so far in Broken Arrow's Camp Edwards facility also known as Alpha Omega thank you for watching guys drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed and check out some of my other Alpha Omega videos on my channel if you want more storyline goodness like this from me one last thing as well, I'm doing a limited time merch campaign right now with a great war poster featuring the Shadow Man and Monty and all that good stuff. It's linked in the description down below, so check that out too if you want to pick yourself up a poster or a t-shirt. Alright, thanks guys, I'll talk to you soon, bye for now.